Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat pagi, salam pagi Jumaat yang mulia Saya ucapkan kepada um, viewers-viewers kita yang berada di YouTube um, Saya Nadia Hanin Nazlan Dan bersama kita pagi ni adalah insan yang um, Macam mana nak kata eh, tak perlu diperkenalkan lagi lah Kita ada bersama kita pada sesi pagi ni Uh, sebagai penerus acara uh, Town Hall 3.0 bahagian pentaksiran dan penilaian akademik bersama kita adalah pengarah BPPA iaitu Profesor Madia <coughs> Teknologis Dr. Syamsul Nur Azlan Muhammad. Okey, apa khabar Dr. Syamsul pagi ni? Alhamdulillah. Kita ofis kita sebelah-sebelah je kan Dr. Nadia. Alhamdulillah. Betul. Ha, sebelah-sebelah saja sebelah kami ni. Ya yeah, betul. Dan uh, kita ucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada semua pensyarah-pensyarah yang masih lagi bersama-sama kita uh, daripada semalam sampai ke hari ini. Dan uh, saya kira uh, topik pagi tadi sangat menarik eh? dan dan Dr. Nadia um, kita juga uh, rasa gembira kerana uh, viewer kita ataupun uh, pensyarah-pensyarah kita masih bersama-sama kita sehingga uh, ke waktu ini. 
Betul tu Dr. Syamsul. Kalau kita boleh lihat viewers kita di YouTube sekarang eh, kita ada 130 dan saya yakin dia akan climb tak lama lagi. Sama juga seperti pagi tadi kita ada lebih 800 viewers kita berada di YouTube. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. It's a good number eh for for a Friday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, dan, dan macam saya katakan Dr. Nadia, uh, on my last um, uh, presentation on our briefing, Uh, kita bawakan tajuk-tajuk yang um, signifikan supaya kesemua tajuk-tajuk ini boleh kita uh, jadikan sebagai inisiatif dan pada masa yang sama juga um, untuk memberikan sedikit uh, kata apa, uh, pandangan ataupun hala tuju kepada semua pesyara-pesyara UITM apa yang sedang kita lakukan uh, di BBPA ini. Alright. Betul tu Dr. Syamsul. So pagi ni Dr. Syamsul, kita akan membicarakan tentang teknologi enhanced assessment. Betul ya Dr. Yeah. Syamsul? Right, betul. Okay. So just a simple question for you, just to get the ball rolling this morning. Izinkan saya berbicara di dalam dua bahasa ya. Technology aided versus technology enhanced. Apa bezanya Dr. Syam? Alright, um... Kalau kita lihat uh, daripada segi perkataan, uh, banyak, banyak terma tu Dr. Nadia sebenarnya. Um, ada yang kata teknologi base, uh, ada yang kata teknologi enhance, ada yang kata teknologi added, ada juga yang melihat kepada uh, teknologi uh, integration. So, uh, kalau kita lihat apa uh, perbincangan uh, pagi tadi, is more towards on the technology based assessment. How we uh, design one platform and how we use that platform to orang kata apa uh, to provide certain services not only uh, the information but also consider on the delivery and assessment termasuklah dengan uh, monitoring and reviewing on that particular platform and i think that i do agree with uh, what uh, dr prasanna say uh, there are a lot of uh, orang kata apa back end work yang berlaku di dalam sistem tersebut dan uh, apa yang kita nak lihat adalah progress of the of the platform. So um, dan saya juga yakin bahawa uh, when we use all the platform, of course we need to have the feedback and the feedback allow us to improve. Uh, bagi saya tidak ada mana-mana platform yang dia lahir terus sempurna. There are must be a feedback uh, for improvement and the product start to evolve and kita boleh melihat kepada uh, Sistem itu bersedia untuk masa hadapan. So that we so, so called as a technology based assessment meaning that we are depending on the uh, the requirement, uh, the specific um, what we call uh, needs of the of the target audience. Tetapi kalau kita melihat kepada uh, teknologi integrated, maksudnya ber, tak sama pula. Maksudnya, maksudnya berbeza because of kita kata integrated, there must be something else that we, kita nak combine ataupun kita nak Uh, orang katakan um, kita nak um, complement each other. Dan kalau kita lihat daripada skala pengukuran eh, um, sebab uh, bila kita nak melihat kubah teknologi ini, uh, dia bukan saja berkisah terhadap how we want to use the technology. Tetapi how do we measure the, effective, the effectiveness of the technology. Right. Jadi um, kalau kita lihat on the technology integration, so kita boleh kategorikan kepada empat indikator. So the first one we call the technology not... Um, presentable for us. All right. So, and uh, the, the second one is the non-essential technology. Number three, supportive technology component. And number four, essential technology component. So, which, uh, which, uh, what kind of, ataupun apakah uh, uh, indicator yang kita perlukan. Dan this indicator membantu kita untuk menentukan sama ada the integration is workable or not. Tapi kalau Dr. Nadia tengok kepada Technology enhanced assessment, it seems slightly different because of kita bercerita tentang the designs of the learning experience. How do we enhance the technology? How do we use our creativity and critical problem solving to provide the best assessment for our students? So, kalau saya nak cuba kaitkan um, ketiga-tiga benda ni, uh, ataupun ketiga-tiga perkara ni, kita boleh melihat yang pertama, kita boleh melihat dari segi aspek how do we measure the, effecti uh, the effectiveness of the technology. Number two, uh, how does the infrastructure and infrastructure helps uh, the usefulness of the technology? Then uh, number three, yang kita boleh tengok adalah the pedagogical uh, approach towards the technology. Jadi ini tiga elemen yang kita boleh lihat untuk membanding bezakan uh, ketiga-tiga terma yang uh, doktor masukkan tadi. 
Okey Dr. Syam, ada di kalangan viewers kita juga yang menyatakan uh, daripada Nur Zahara ya, pelbagai terma kesimpulannya ada technology involvement. Yes, correct. Memang ada technology involvement. Whatever you say, when you letak technology tu sama ada di depan, di tengah dan di belakang, mm -hmm. yes, technology akan ada cuma tinggal the proportion of the technology use, uh, the focus of the technology use uh, itu bergantung kepada uh, kebijaksanaan uh, pensyarah untuk memahami konteks tersebut. Baik Dr. Syam. So bila kita membicarakan tentang teknologi enhanced assessment in layman's term, adakah hmm. kita just simply say our traditional assessment tu kita just replace it with digital version of it. Alright. Digital version of our traditional assessment. Alright. Uh, this is a misconception sebenarnya. Okay. <laughs> Kalau kita lihat um, when we talk about the technology, uh, ada orang yang obsessed to use the technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ada orang yang, okay, I'm I'm ready to use the technology, tak ada masalah, insyaAllah okay, it's, it's, it's fine for me. Dan ada juga orang yang reluctant to use the technology. Right. Jadi, uh, we have a different single, uh, kata apa, uh, respective target audience yang mempunyai masalah yang berbeza-beza. Uh, berbalik kepada soalan Dr. Nadia, saya nak kongsikan satu um, apa um, slide bersama dengan uh, warga uh, UITM untuk melihat apa yang diperkatakan oleh Dr. Nadia sebentar tadi. Saya mengambil satu model yang sangat ringkas. SAMR model. Alright. Uh, daripada perkataan substitute, augmentation, modification and redefinition. So kalau kita melihat kepada yang tadi yang Dr. Nadia katakan tadi. We are talking about uh, is it ataupun should the lecturer simply replace the existing assessment with the, the, the digital version. So, kalau kita lihat kepada the stage number one, the substitution. Uh, benda ini memang boleh berlaku. Tidak menjadi satu masalah because of we can use the technology as a, as a direct tool substitute but there is no functional change to the lesson. So meaning that uh, maybe the student just can create and share. Contohnya macam kita minta pelajar-pelajar gantikan penggunaan paper dengan blog. Uh -huh. Alright, so the function is still the same just a matter of you put some sort of the technology dalam itu untuk to, to have the replacement. Uh -huh. And this substitute. Tak ada masalah. It can be done that way. But again, is it really to cater on the certain skill set required them to be more? Right. That's the questions. Yang itu yang kita kena fikirkan. Uh, is it, yeah, okay to have the replacement but you have to think that is it this material is sustainable? Kan dalam dalam saya minta lima juga saya katakan how do we ensure the sustainable assessment? Mm -hmm. So we cannot uh, simply replace just a matter of because of kita nak pakai teknologi tersebut. Jadi kalau kita pergi kepada uh, uh, perkara yang kedua, augmentation, we are talking about the use of technology act as a direct tool, substitute, there are some functional improvement of the lesson. It's slightly better from the previous one, meaning that you might be used some some sort of add-ons, contohnya, okay, now students, daripada paper, kita replace kepada blog, but we put some, some sort of discussion. Maybe we can provide on the solution and the functions of that technology become more meaningful. So meaning that you are upgrading from the on kata apa, the monotonous communications and then you upgrade it is more towards on the interactive interactions. But again, saya percaya Dr. Nadia, since kita dah pandemic COVID for quite some times, we have the ODL until the five version. Um, I do believe that kita tidak berada dalam keadaan satu dan dua ini. I do, <laughs> I, I do believe that. Eh, Sekurang-kurangnya kita berada di dalam keadaan modification. Meaning that we as a lecturers use the technology allows the significant redesign of the task in lesson. Kalau dulu kita mengajar mungkin 30 slide, hari ini kita buat di, kita buat bahan pengajaran kita 30 minit ataupun 20 minit compri, comprising all the elements of lesson yang kita perlukan then we deliver to our students and the student receive, give a feedback and they are participants. So meaning that simultaneously kita boleh lihat bahawa ada value added yang akan berlaku bila kita modify our content meaning that the, the student able to collaborate the student able to um, to give their opinion sama ada dalam bentuk synchronous or asynchronous but again Dr Nadia ianya pun tidak tidak terhenti di situ kerana apa saya percaya bahawa if we can do some sort of redefinition the technology allows for the creation of the new task and project that were previously in conceivable uh, with uh, within a traditional lesson then the student become the co-collaborator 
Saya nak kongsikan pengalaman saya dengan Dr. Nadia. Mungkin ini sedikit panjang sikit Dr. Nadia. Dulu kita selalu Silakan percaya Dr. Syam. Bahawa, ha, dulu kita selalu percaya bahawa uh, I think that our student not able to think critically ataupun critically. But I prove to you uh, in our recent activity with Maxis UITM. Alright. So we ask the student to create a 60 second video on their uh, on their context, on their field of expertise. And we can see the process. How does the students use their knowledge? Not only uh, try to modify, try to redefine back the meaning of their uh, if, uh, in, in, in their knowledge and construct right. a new one to make sure that the, the layman ataupun orang-orang yang biasa boleh memahami konteks mereka. So just mm -hmm. a matter of how can we design and redesign mm -hmm. the the context and how can we assess the context uh, to make sure that bahan yang kita bangunkan ini adalah is a very meaningful uh, learning material for our students. All right. So um, pada saya mungkin I think that uh, pensyarah-pensyarah di luar sana you can explore and then mungkin juga boleh Google search lepas ni tengok uh, apa sebenarnya SAMR ni because of if I want to explain more banyak benda yang saya boleh explain daripada sini tetapi these are the very basic models yang kita boleh gunakan selain daripada model-model yang ada. Right. Macam yang tadi Dr. Syamsul ada menyatakan tentang level 1 which is substitution. Adakah sekiranya pelajar, pelajar ah minta maaf. Sekiranya pensyarah-pensyarah kita menggunakan existing set of questions yang pernah mungkin pernah digunakan ketika final exam tahun-tahun sebelum ini dan kita just upload a digital version of it dan minta pelajar kita ambil secara di atas talian is that does that falls under substitution category Dr. Syam? Oh, yep, yeah, correct, correct. Because of there is no, there is no changes happen. So mm -hmm. you just ambil the existing one and then you letak asal saja. Mm -hmm. Because of uh, the bila kita bila kita membangunkan bahan, especially uh, kita kena kita kena faham bahawa bahan itu dibangunkan merujuk kepada situasi ataupun keperluan pada masa tersebut. Kan? Meaning that when we design our learning materials keadaan pada waktu itu adalah keadaan kelas fizikal and we design as a such but when when uh, our landscape ataupun when our setting is different meaning that we have to change into a new uh, dimension of learning environment meaning that we have to re-evaluate our learning materials so kita tak boleh kata one size fits all uh, hmm. it's not workable for now because of we need to understand the learning preference the learning needs and we need to analyze the context of learning within the time period given to us so how do we actually augment existing questions can we actually do that with uh, technology yes we can do this with technology but mm -hmm. again uh, maybe kita boleh kata you provide a good questions you provide a good activity mm -hmm. the technology try to catalyze all of this function so meaning that kalau tak ada soalan yang baik kalau tidak ada aktiviti yang baik if you have the technology technology can't help so much kan jadi tak guna juga because of uh, dia tidak memberi makna apa-apa kepada pelajar-pelajar so uh, that's the reason why uh, saya suka menggunakan perkataan technology enhance assessment because of we are not so much focus on the technology we need the technology to enhance the assessment so meaning that we need to design the assessment appropriately and use the technology give them some sort of experience to make sure that they can enhance the learning so right. dia berbeza dengan teknologi uh, base because of the, the technology base is too much focus on the info and infrastructure of the technology right, right? Okay, so Dr. Syamsul, di UITM kita dah mengalami ODL ni dah beberapa setelah beberapa semester. So I believe everyone or uh, most of our audience are quite clear on how technology can assist them especially when there's disruption in um, in operations such as pandemic kan? Ataupun bencana-bencana alam seperti banjir. But can you share your thoughts with us uh, like on how technology enhance assessment can actually tackle issues, uh, pedagogic issues. All right. Uh, this one is the most important um, uh, notes need to be taken out by everyone. Because of what? Um, saya bawa tuan-tuan uh, melihat kepada satu model uh, asas. Eh? Saya rasa kalau untuk pensyarah-pensyarah uh, daripada Faculty of Education, sebut saja TPEC ataupun mereka-mereka daripada apa daripada bidang education sebut saja TPEC insyaallah mereka akan faham model ini because of this a very fundamental model uh, for a teachers uh, in education need to understand because of we are not 
just only to deliver, but also we need to consider uh, other elements to make sure that we can become a good teachers. So, uh, kalau kita merujuk kepada uh, soalan Dr. Nadia tadi, uh, can the technology enhanced assessment can tackle the pedagogical issue? Mm -hmm. If you can see from this diagram, and you akan nampak komponen technological knowledge and also pedagogical knowledge. Dan juga, um, as I said, content knowledge biasanya dia termasuk sekali dengan assessment lah. Jadi kalau kita lihat um, dalam model ini, uh, ataupun orang panggil sebagai TPAC, alright, TPAC, kesemuanya saling bergantung di antara satu sama lain. Alright, so meaning that we need all of this. Uh, we cannot focus so much on the technology. We cannot so much focus on the pedagogy. Mm -hmm. so, Kadang-kadang kita lihat, uh, ada orang mahir pedagogi, teknologi pula lemah. Mm -hmm. Ada orang yang teknologi dia kuat, pedagogi pula tak ada. Kan? Ada orang yang ada content, ada pedagogi, ada masalah dengan teknologi. So meaning that every each of the lecturers, you need to strengthen to make sure, to make sure that there is some balance between pedagogy, uh, content dan juga knowledge. Bukan nak kena tahu banyak, tetapi memadai dengan Memahami dalam konteks khusus masing-masing pun dah cukup sebenarnya. Dan disebabkan itu, if we able to understand uh, the functions of TPEC framework, uh, I think that the most important part here is we able to collaborate with our teach, uh, with our students. That's the important element. Sebab dalam konteks pengajaran, uh, collaboration, coaching, communication, critical thinking dan juga pro, uh, dan juga creative thinking antara elemen-elemen yang sangat penting perlu dibangunkan di dalam kelas. That's the reason why saya selalu emphasize benda ni. We need to have a design based lesson plan, lesson plan. Kena ada lesson planning. You tak boleh datang kelas macam okay class, hi everyone, so start kelas. Tak boleh. You need to design your learning. Because mm -hmm. of what? Because of it give you some sort of idea how do you want to conduct your class and you need to consider all of these three elements. All right, and of course, yes, we cannot deny the use of technology. Bukan saya kata nak kena pakai banyak sangat teknologi. Kadang-kadang there is a one or two uh, technology or applications really help the student to engage and give a better experience uh, in their assessment. And when you have a proper uh, planning, proper technology, and easily you can scaffold your students and uh, put some belief on teachers also the students uh, to make sure that they can finish the study and also they can understand the, the, the context of the learning. So, uh, Dr. Nadia, I think that, um, macam saya katakan tadi, um, kita tak, tak boleh melihat kepada kecenderungan terhadap sesuatu perkara, contohnya teknologi sahaja. So, we need to complement each other then we can, insyaAllah, we, we, can, we can do better. Mm -hmm. Tadi Dr. Syam ada menyatakan, so yeah. before we come into our class, we have to design our lesson. Yeah. Boleh tak kalau Dr. Syam kongsikan sedikit, like just briefly, yeah. how do we actually design our lesson? Probably, mungkin ada rakan-rakan kita yang pesara-pesara muda dan baharu yang mm. masih belum uh, arif tentang nak designing their own lesson. Especially yeah, betul. Yang from from non-education, uh, non apa tu, bukan daripada fakulti education okay. kan? Uh -huh. So, I bagi a very simple, um, orang kata apa, uh, example, make us to understand. Mm -hmm. Alright, okay. Um, for example, we have a class for three hours, all right? For three hours is quite long for us. Maksudnya kalau daripada Syah Alam tu, dia boleh sampai ke mana? Johor, kan? Tiga jam tu, kan? Jauh kan? Uh, perjalanan ni jauh. So, buat tiga jam tu macam-macam kita boleh buat. Betul. And if you talk about the student-centered learning, mm -hmm. we cannot teach all the time. We cannot lecture all the time. There are some sort of engagement need to be designed to make sure that there are uh, balance between lecturing and also scaffolding and also facilitating. So uh, that's the reason why we need to design how many hours we want to lecture. Mm -hmm. All right. For example, we know that the 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 the, the attention span the project kita memang kan kalau dalam empat puluh uh, orang kata kalau uh, baca nota ataupun mendengar sekali pun saya paling kuat pun empat puluh minit lah. Mm. And is it you want to go further for one hour and 15 minutes or one hour 30 minutes? Okay, never mind. But must be some sort of break in the middle, okay? Jadi, you need to design the pathway itu. Alright? And you need to consider after lecture, apa yang saya nak kena buat? You want to have the learning activity. Uh -huh. And the learning activity need to be designed. Uh -huh. 
Kan you tak boleh datang kelas you kata oh I nak buat aktiviti ni agak-agak. Betul. So, agak-agak tak boleh. Uh, dalam dalam persediaan pengajaran agak-agak tak boleh. We need to plan because of we want to map with our learning outcome. So we need to design the activity based on the learning outcome. That's the reason why formative assessment is very important to increase in that particular portion. Alright? Mm -hmm. It must be some sort of reflection because we want to make sure that there are some sort of communication between us and teacher. And we can assess the students whether in the formative way, alright? Ataupun kadang-kadang kita kata, okay, uh, dalam assessment for example, kan? Um, kalau kita kata tak formative pun tak mengapa. Maybe we can use as a, to diagnose our students. Mm -hmm. Alright? To predict what happened uh, uh, to our student behavior. These are the things yang kita perlu lihat. Uh, kebanyakan kita melihat kepada we use the technology because of we want to we want to facilitate our student according to the formative and summative assessment. Right. But do you know that kita juga boleh gunakan technology to diagnose our student and to predict our student behavior. Mm -hmm. Alright. So meaning that within 14 weeks sebenarnya tuan-tuan dan perempuan ada banyak benda yang kita boleh assess yang kita boleh ukur dan ini boleh jadi sebahagian daripada uh, alat untuk memberitahu kepada kita how good we are and how good our students. Dia memberikan kita learning analytics ya Dr. Syam? Ya, yeah, learning analytics. Betul. Betul. Okay Dr. Syam, uh, jadi as we move back uh, to physical classes eh, coming soon ni, minggu hadapan saja. So kita move back to physical classes. Bagaimana? Apa? Dr. Syam ada tips tak? Macam mana kita nak embed technology in physical classes? Alright, um, I think that the technology classes, um, ya yeah, betul lah kita dah 2 tahun kan, 2 tahun lebih uh, ODL and kita pun dah well ready silap-silap kita nak masuk kelas pun kita rasa macam janggal lah. Janggal. Sedikit <laughs> rasa awkward kat situ. But again, uh, as I mentioned, um, even kalau dulu pun, Um, I give you an experience. Eh? We use the technology very less because of uh, the most important part is how do we engage with the students. And um, secara pedagoginya, um, I think that um, we still can um, use the technology because of uh, kalau kita lihat uh, hari ini pelajar-pelajar uh, kita, uh, most of them have their smartphone. All right. right. So we can have that uh, kind of approach meaning that try to make sure that the approach of bring your own device yang tidak terlalu memaksa pelajar-pelajar untuk bersama-sama dengan kita. Alright, so meaning that we can design a very simple activity, use the simple technology and allow the student to engage with it. It's as simple as, as it is. Boleh, tak ada masalah. Uh, yang jadi masalah lagi bila kadang-kadang kita selalu compare diri kita dengan pencara lain. Mm -hmm. Kita masuk kelas pencara lain, pencara tu pakai head mounted, pakai macam-macam kan. So kita rasa berdebak, eh, ini ke maksudnya teknologi? <laughs> kan? Tak juga. Sebab tu kalau kita lihat, there are, ada juga teknologi kita panggil sebagai low uh, technology dan juga high technology in which we need to uh, select and choose which one is the best for our students. Right. We have to strike a balance kan Dr. Yeah, Syam? Strike a balance. Jangan apa? Jangan uh, meletakkan keadaan yang uh, terlalu memaksa kepada uh, pensyarah sendiri dan juga kepada pelajar-pelajar. Uh, Betul. Dr. Syam, kita di YouTube sekarang ni kita ada 362 viewers bersama dengan right. kita uh, dan sekiranya viewers-viewers kita ada soalan yang mereka ingin bertanyakan kepada Dr. Syamsul, uh, sila type sila kan. di ruangan chat. Ya. Okay. So Dr. Syamsul, we know that technology enhanced assessment it actually assist us with issues, uh, with operational issues uh, as well as like you mentioned with pedagogical issues. Right. But okay, as as one of the largest, I, I, I mean like as the largest university in Malaysia, what do you think are our biggest challenges in implementing um, technology enhanced assessment throughout the system? All right. Um, first of all, um, we need to understand what and whatever technology comes in, there are, might be a significant impacts, whether a positive impact or negative impact. All right. There are always have a risk when we try to bring in the technology into our university. So, dalam konteks um, technology enhanced assessment, uh, if you can see from my slide, uh, there are many scholars mentions about this. All right. They are talking about plagiarism detection and invigilation issue in which has been covered by Dr. Prasanna 
pagi tadi right so meaning that we have the original we have the proctoring uh, mechanism through our new future these are the things yang memang dah di, dah difikirkan uh, i think most of the literature paling la, paling lama yang saya dapat tu tahun 2006 dah dibincangkan perkara ini all right and another difficulty is we are talking about scalability and transferability of the practice so because of our scale um, besar is it our transferability kita rendah Itu semalam yang saya yang saya bincang, uh, tanyakan satu soalan kepada Prof J. Is it our skills? Is it our size? Uh, adalah um, distractor kepada semua inisiatif yang kita nak lakukan. Um, and Dr. Prof J kata, no. Um, if we understand uh, the, our scale, scalability and transferability in the form of uh, dalam konteks UITM, I think that we able to use that as an opportunity to make sure that we can go forward right mm -hmm. and uh, perkara yang paling penting sekali adalah bila kita membuat uh, teknologi bila kita melaksanakan technology enhanced assessment these are the these are the very uh, crucial matters that i think that most of the university around the world talking about this they are talking about reliability and validity of the high stake assessment right so ini memang isu universal. Dr. Nadia, ini bukan isu UITM. Kalau kita tanya dalam konteks nasional hari ini pun banyak universiti mengalami isu yang sama. Mm -hmm. Cuma tinggal pendekatan kita berbeza. Kenapa saya kata pendekatan berbeza? Kerana yang pertama, our act towards on to reduce the final examination towards continuous and also the final assessment. So ini sebenarnya Walaupun kita kurangkan final exam kepada form assessment yang berbeza, mm -hmm. ini sebenarnya ada significant impact terhadap penggunaan technology enhanced assessment. Kerana apa? Kalau kita memang sedia maklum, pengujian conventional adalah pengujian yang kita boleh kata in terms of validity, validity dia memang terkawal. Kan? Hari ini kalau kita kata, kalau misalnya kata kalau kita buat final year project, how do you sure that the validity and the reliability on that particular assessment? So there are always a question mark. How can we uh, control um, uh, the, apa, apa, uh, the, uh, the validity and reliability to make sure that bila kita uh, buat pengujian tersebut, we confident not only with the questions but we confident with the marks given. Mm -hmm. Kan hari ni kadang-kadang perasan tak? Kadang-kadang kita bila kita dah bagi markah tapi kita rasa macam eh rasanya macam markah ni tak betul lah. Patah balik kan? Eh. Kan <laughs> Maka dari ni sini rasa macam maka ni tak betul lah. Itu isu dia sebenarnya. Dan I think that um, it's about time when we talk about technology and hand assessment, we need to rethink our assessment strategy. Mm -hmm. So um, dan semalam Dr. Nadia, I think that uh, one of our initiative uh, not only focus on the uh, normal students condition but also we need to consider with the student with disability. Right. Right, right. Itu cabaran kita yang paling besar lah. So maksudnya bagaimana, I, I think the, the project is sedar kan. So student disability uh, assessment units yang kita nak propose. Mm -hmm. Dan uh, dan kita lihat ini adalah antara isu yang kita kena ambil. Betul. Dan then, then we need to rethink, re, re, re-strategize what is the best assessment for them. Kerana kita melihat pada hari ini pelajar-pelajar biasa sahaja. So what happened to this student and how can we facilitate them? How can we help them? Sebab kita dah buka akses kepada mereka untuk menerima pendidikan di universiti kita. Mm -hmm. And the last one is we are talking about the need and the purpose of the technology. Macam saya katakan tadi, we need to understand why we have to, why we use that technology and what are the purpose. Is it the purpose serve to the students or the purpose is it serve to you? Kan, kalau purpose to serve to you, apa dia? Kalau purpose to serve to our students, apa dia? So we need to be more critical, more sensible dan kena ada sedikit empathy di sini. Baik Dr. Syam. So just now you mentioned that even though like regardless of our size, um, it's not an issue. Yeah. Kan? Dr. Syam ada menyatakan tu. So how do you think that uh, teknologi ni dia boleh membantu enhance our feedback kepada pelajar especially when dealing with a large uh, group of students kita ada pensyarah-pensyarah kita yang melakukan mass lectures uh, dan juga mengajar uh, 
pelajar dengan jumlah yang besar Dr. Syam. So, how do you think technology can add value to our feedback? You know, feedback is very important for yeah, students feedback, to... Feedback is very important. Yeah. Dia, kalau we look on our um, survey yesterday, mm. right? uh, dan dan kita boleh lihat, ada juga pencara-pencara kita yang tak bagi lagi feedback kepada pelajar-pelajar. Which is... Itu, itulah dia, Doktor. Yeah. Bila saya melihat statistik tu, I don't think pencara ni tidak mahu memberikan feedback. Yeah. Tapi mungkin ada kekangan dari segi... Eh, kelas dia ada 200 pelajar. Ya, Macam mana dia nak berikan ya. feedback tu, Doktor? So, That's the reason why uh, kita melihat servis malam sebagai indicator. Hmm. So, this is a way of improvement. How can we improve our communication with students? Um, saya saya pun sangat yakin kadang-kadang bukan pesyarah tak nak buat. Maybe there are some sort of difficulty in terms of giving back all the feedback to the students. Right. And that's the reason why, uh, Doktor Nadia. Uh, we need to be very understand that um, Bila kita bercerita tentang uh, feedback atau bila kita bercerita tentang teknologi, um, kita perlu melihat kepada uh, yang penting itu adalah apa. Alright, so for example, um, sebab tu saya kata somehow, somehow, somehow we need to be more uh, sensible because of uh, we need to give a feedback. Kalau tak dapat bagi feedback dalam keadaan, uh, contohnya lah kan, uh, macam saya, saya pun guna uh, you future and then and i think that um dan bila saya minta pelajar-pelajar saya memasukkan uh, tugasan mereka di dalam you future dan uh, di situ ada rubriknya di situ ada dia punya orang kata apa uh, dia punya uh, descriptor share dan sebagainya banyak but again somehow or other you need to accept the fact that the student like themselves to be more personalized so kita right. kena jumpa, kita kena bercakap dengan pelajar seorang-seorang. Tapi it's okay if the class about maybe 20-30 orang. Betul. Tapi how about 200, 300? Then dekat sinilah penggunaan teknologi yang sewajarnya. And the students need to cope with the, with the technology. And the technology makes the lecture more, uh, must, uh, lebih lebih mudah untuk 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 pensyarah-pensyarah. Uh, uh, Dan disebabkan itu juga, I think that um, saya agak suka juga dengan penggunaan beberapa fungsi-fungsi di U Future contohnya macam rubrics uh, yang ada some sort of macam spider web. Uh, when we mark individually, simultaneously kita akan dapat data dalam bentuk kumpulan. So when we want to give a feedback, mungkin kita tak boleh nak bagi feedback secara orang kata apa? Secara uh, uh, satu persatu because of the class is quite large. Kita boleh bagi, kita boleh buat generalization dan kita boleh maklumkan kepada pelajar-pelajar. There are a lot of way on how to communicate with the student. Just a matter of, you need to understand um, uh, how to do it. Betul tu Dr. Syam. Um, apabila kita start dengan our ODL eh, at the beginning of the pandemic, saya pun tidak faham bagaimana nak menggunakan rubrik un- uh, secara online mm-hmm. untuk assess all the essays that the students yeah. are, uh, have been submitting kan. Tetapi yeah. as we as we progress, uh, lagi banyak, lagi lama kita ada experience uh, dengan um, open and distance learning. So it's apparently it's, it's so much easier ya. Yeah? Kalau kita menggunakan secara online daripada secara tradisional yang kita print dan juga kita follow rubrik kita dan kita marking. Sangat yeah. cepat. So yeah. probably for those yang masih belum mencuba uh, uh, macam mana kita nak set up rubrik online dan juga uh, submission of assessment melalui okay. UFuture or probably even if you're still using Google Classroom, please do so. Dia akan sangat yeah. membantu dalam urusan kita memberi feedback kepada pelajar-pelajar kita. That's okay. reason Dr. Nadia. Tadi ada request daripada rakan-rakan kita to have the functions of annotation di dalam UFuture. Right. Because of right. Ya, yeah. this is very simple. Uh, orang kata apa? Perkara-perkara penting yang yang perlu diberikan perhatian because of kalau boleh kita nak on the go all the time. Dan saya saya percaya rakan-rakan pecara di luar sana, we now on the go. Betul. We now on the go. So maksudnya sambil-sambil kita tengah duduk tengah duduk apa dekat dalam meeting pun kita boleh sebelum meeting bermula kita boleh buat marking, kita boleh buat bagi feedback dan sebagainya. So this ada culture. Kita tak perlukan satu one setup. One one proper place to have everything and baru buat kerja tak. Now we are everywhere at anywhere at any time. Betul. Yeah. So Dr. Syam, I would like to circle back to your idea just now when you said like, so di dalam classroom we have to provide formative and summative assessments Correct. for the students, right? Yes. Okay. So how do we do that using technology enhanced assessment? Like both formative and summative, can it be done? Yeah, it can yeah. be done. There are lots of functions yang kita boleh guna pakai. Um, I think that um, saya nak tunjukkan satu contoh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. 
ha, kalau kita lihat kepada this diagram, alright, so we are talking about uh, ada tiga komponen when we conduct our teaching and learning. So ini kita kita melihat kepada how do we uh, try to make sure that this this are the environment. Okay, kalau kita lihat on the first uh, on the first diagram tu is more towards on the environment. So dalam dalam environment pengajaran inilah antara uh, presence yang ada. Contohnya social presence. Cognitive presence and also teaching presence. So, bila kita masuk dalam kelas, tiga elemen ni memang akan ada. Alright, just a matter of uh, dalam nak, nak pastikan social presence, cognitive presence dan juga uh, teaching presence tersebut, uh, sudah semestinya kita kita akan ada subs uh, elemen di dalam itu. Contohnya, we need to set some sort of learning uh, experience by having a discourse by looking at selected content ataupun we set the climate to make sure that bila pelajar-pelajar tu uh, bila kita mengajar of course kita akan ada student teacher interaction dan kita juga nak lihat juga bagaimana student kita berinteraksi dengan content yang telah pun kita uh, kongsikan bersama-sama pelajar dan yang paling penting sekali adalah ini this one is the ultimate one macam mana student berinteraksi sesama mereka Right. And I think that we are losing this selepas mm -hmm. sebab tu COVID because of most of us focus on our teaching presence, focus on our cognitive presence yang social presence ni dah tak ada dah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so sebab apa saya kata tak ada? Because of the students start to close their mic, start to close their camera, when ask question, they don't ask, they, 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 they don't give any answers, they don't respond dan sebagainya. So we are losing that part. So right. how to make sure that we can simulate the same thing happen in the physical way dalam bentuk teknologi ataupun dalam bentuk virtual environment. So mm -hmm. we need to design the environment for them. So sebab itu saya bagi satu contoh. With the same uh, framework, saya letakkan kat situ contohnya kalau teaching present, you can use the Padlet and the Google site. It's just a very simple application that we can use, very accessible. Again, guna tak ada masalah. Tetapi you need to make sure that when you design your content must be some sort of the process. Kan? Content yang membenarkan kita untuk pelajar-pelajar self-independently go through all the content and use their logic to provide some sort of solution or maybe some sort of um, orang kata apa, uh, reflective dan sebagainya. Dan right. uh, to have that, we need to have a very proper question. Sebab tu saya, saya selalu bagi uh, waktu, uh, maksudnya kalau misalnya kata saya bagi uh, orang kata apa, perkongsian saya bersama-sama dengan fakulti dan juga kampus. Saya selalu emphasize, we need to design a good questions. With a good question, student will respond you with a good answer. So, Jadi, itu yang kita nak berlaku dan baru kita nampak the thinking process. And of course, yes, to have the social presence, kita kena pilih teknologi yang boleh mendekatkan kita dengan pelajar. Kan? Jadi, I think that one of the the simplest thing kan, ada orang mengajar pakai IG, ada orang mengajar pakai Facebook, ada orang mengajar pakai TikTok. Right, so adakah itu salah? Tidak, as long as you understand, the teaching present is there, the cognitive present is there, the social present is there, they should be okay. Right. Right, so nampak macam complicated, tapi when you cuba duduk balik and then try to reflect, eh, apa benda yang aku buat sebenarnya? Dekat mana aku punya cognitive part? Dekat mana aku punya social part? Then you start to rethink and start to facilitate much better learning environment for your students. Right. So apabila Dr. Shamsu uh, kongsikan kita uh, this framework kan uh, dengan pelbagai app ataupun platform yang ada uh, yang available for us educators. So it ties back to what you mentioned earlier about yep. designing your lesson kan? Yes, yes designing design your lesson. lesson. Because there are so many platforms, there are so many applications that we can use. So it's in, in order to use it effectively, you have to sit down and tengok right. kita perlukan dan app mana yang akan capai this uh, learning outcome yang kita nak tadi kan? Betul. Betul. There are some sort of we call as a constructive alignment lah. Biasa orang nampak constructive alignment dekat dalam, dalam CAP kan? <laughs> Everything that we did must be have a, some sort of constructive alignment. Jadi kalau kita letakkan the transition of uh, this model dengan model TPAC tadi, we understand that sebenarnya benda tu hampir sama sahaja. And that's a matter of this one, kita nak make sure that we can maybe um, dengan ada framework-framework ni akan bantu pencara-pencara untuk faham how to give uh, 
more uh, orang kata apa convenience environment to, to to our students dan student kita pun rasa selesa untuk belajar dan sebagainya but again this is how bila kita buat perkara-perkara uh, macam ni Dr Nadia kan that's the, the, that's how somehow kadang-kadang kita 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 bila kita buat kita buat sahaja we need some sort of data to prove whether what we are doing now is right or wrong jadi right. sebab tu saya selalu kata bahawa assessment is not only formative and summative Right. Kalau kita boleh buat sedikit lebih eh, untuk keperluan kita untuk tambah baik diri kita, we can have the diagnostic assessment and predictive analysis to make sure that we can come up with a good model for our class. Kan? Itu yang kita panggil sebagai research informed teaching and learning in which ah. kita buat sesuatu itu untuk tambah baik pengajaran kita dan itu juga very align dengan apa yang saya katakan sustainable assessment. Kita tak nak buat assessment yang kita tukar-tukar setiap semester memenatkan. So kita tak nak buat benda yang memenatkan. Kita nak kita pilih sesuatu uh, kita pilih sesuatu assessment method tersebut dan kita tambah baik, tambah baik, tambah baik. Dan itu sepatutnya perkara berlaku uh, di dalam kursus yang kita uh, kongsikan bersama dengan pelajar-pelajar kita. So basically Dr. Syam, you yeah. design properly, you take some time to design your lesson properly at the beginning. Ya yeah, betul. Mm. And it took me sometimes. Um, saya ambil masa yang sangat lama Dr. Nadia untuk faham perkara ini. Um, I think that uh, when my first uh, orang kata apa, first day report dekat Faculty of Education um, I think that I dwell with this um, yelah maksudnya kita kita tak ada pengalaman yang banyak kan so I think that I I focus on this about tiga tahun kot uh, just to understand uh, apa yang saya buat ni betul ke tak betul so tiga tahun eh Dr. Syam uh, nak bagi faham nak bagi faham maksudnya tiga tahun tu nak bagi faham apa yang saya buat ni betul ke tak betul Right. Nak bagi faham bahawa uh, saya sebenarnya bila masuk kelas saya bukan mengajar. Tapi betul on the first year tu saya rasa macam saya masuk masuk ke, masuk kelas saya nak ajar semua benda. Kan? I think that most of the lecturers bila you masuk kelas you nak, nak ajar semua benda. Kan? Tapi sebenarnya hakikatnya tidak. You tak boleh ajar semua benda. <laughs> kan? You tak boleh ajar semua benda. Kan? Jadi uh, we need to be more precise. Kenapa kena kena be more precise? Because of kita punya masa tak lama Dr. Nadia. Kita ada 14 minggu saja Dengan 3 minggu pentaksiran akhir. Then that's our our our, our time bound lah yang kita. Kan? Yang kita ada kan kita Dr. Ada, betul. So, so the next question might be a little bit controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, di mana kita tie back tadi dengan kita punya designing of our lesson. Right, yeah. so you spend time to design your lesson, to design your activities, your teaching and learning activities in class, right? Yep. And suddenly, Dr. Syam, semester depan kita dapat subjek lain, Dr. Syam. Macam mana tu? <laughs> Ini unavoidable, uh, apa? unavoidable uh, situation kan? Betul, saya uh, mengalami uh, perkara begini kan, Dr. Nadia. Uh, memang kadang-kadang kita rasa macam sedikit uh, terganggu, sedikit terbeban. But however, uh, Jangan kata, jangan katalah tak marah kan, mestilah marah kan, mestilah merungut sikit. Tetapi if we um, have certain framework in our uh, in our mind, in back uh, in back of our mind, and we try to understand the context, we able to manage to to to, to do it. Saya pernah dapat Dr. Najah um, a last minute change uh, on the course, but because of I understand on how to design uh, the lesson plan, it it doesn't Uh, took me so much time on that. Just a matter of to understand what right. the requirement of the course and start to redesign back right. and lihat kepada uh, outcome outcome yang perlu dicapai. Right, because some of the activities can still be applicable yeah. to other uh, other subjects, right? It's Betul. just a change of context saja, kan, Dr. Shamil? Betul. Betul. Right. Betul, Nadia. For your information, I have hundreds of activity. <laughs> hundreds of questions that I design um, ini, so, ini bukan bank soalan eh ni bank uh, activity ini bank soalan saya maksudnya kalau uh, saya nak activity, bank activity. Uh -huh. I can pick up I nak ambil activity yang mana so again, uh, kelas I, nak, nak, I rasa saya nak pakai activity ni I boleh ambil I ambil I pakai uh, so meaning that dia macam dia macam konsep question bank uh, question juga cuma I learning activity bank questions uh, learning activity bank lah so uh -huh. saya boleh, boleh ambil 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 dan saya gunakan sebab tu saya katakan tadi Um, we need to be more resourceful in the sense of designing our activity. Betul, content tu dah ada. Mm -hmm. But to design the activity, I do think so that you need you, you you cannot refer from the textbook. Right. You need to be more resourceful. 
Sebab tu Dr. Nadia, saya selalu bagi perkongsian. Saya bila masuk kelas, saya ajar dalam 30 minit, 30 minit, saya banyak akan activity, activity to stimulate the understanding and construct the student meanings. Mm -hmm. Right, so that from there, I able to assess the students uh, through uh, maybe diagnostic analysis ataupun uh, formative uh, activity to make sure that, okay, the student already done this this part. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's an effort. Again, jadi um, sebab tu kadang-kadang bila orang kata, oh, tak ada masalah ke tukar last minute? Insyaallah okay good. Ha, and okay good sebab I I have something in in, in apa in my box in, in my small box yang saya boleh ambil and letak letak dalam kelas saya. So basically these activities they uh, dia adalah disusun mengikut learning outcome kan Dr. Syam ataupun skill set yeah. yang ingin kita capai. Um, um obviously um <coughs> saya akan lihat kepada outcome dahulu. And um, somehow or other kadang-kadang uh, bila kita mengajar subjek orang ya yeah, disusun topik as a such but I think that Um, somehow or other, I, I, I custom made juga uh, the topic to make sure that uh, it meet the learning outcome. So, saya selalu meletakkan outcome is the first priority. Right. Alright. So, uh, the topic and everything, uh, I think that's something that uh, yang you boleh add on later, kan? Yang sedia ada pakai tapi yang lain tu you boleh add on. But how to arrive on the learning outcome is very important. You akan ada masalah. Bila you terlalu fokus kepada to topik, you tak faham learning outcome tu apa. Ha, dia akan ada masalah dekat assessment. Hmm. Kan, kita mengajar saja, tak tengok learning outcome, tiba-tiba bila kita nak ukur pelajar-pelajar kita, kita tak faham outcome tersebut, anda kita problem. So, bila tengok balik apa yang kita ajar, yang apa yang kita ajar tu tak meet juga outcome. Lagilah masalah dan kita sedar benda tu minggu yang ke-14. Alamak. <laughs> ha, right? So, Haru tu. Ha. Ha, so, should be careful and be mindful lah about this. Right. Okay, so moving forward with Education 5.0 and UITM is also advocating collaborative teaching, collaborative teaching and learning, kan, Dr. Syam, kan? Yep. So how do we exploit the collaborative potential of technology-enhanced assessments? All right. Definitely um, ada collaborative potential, right? So how do we do that? All right. Um, kalau kita lihat, Dr. Nadia, um, I think that uh, when we talk about um, moving forward, we highlighting about education 5.0 we are so grateful because of we have a lot of initiative um, has been stated at education 5.0 right it was started with uh, uh, our mantan dvca uh, prof kamal and followed by uh, our prof datuk uh, rozia jano and now we have prof datin as a dvca so i think that uh, when we talk about um, looking at the collaborative potentials, uh, we are very grateful because of kita ada uh, collaborative teaching framework has been published on 2021. And on that uh, particular uh, framework has been mentioned, how can we collaborate through teaching, through learning and through assessment. And just a matter of how can we uh, exploit the technology. So macam mana kita nak masukkan teknologi di dalam, uh, kata apa, di dalam um, element collaborative tersebut. Dan uh, kalau mengikut pada pengalaman saya, Dr. Nadia, uh, I give you one example. Um, on the collaborative assessment, I think that we did this one sebenarnya uh, for quite some times. Um, dan saya, saya yakin juga kebanyakan fakulti yang lain juga do the collaborative assessment physically as before this. And nowadays, I think that it's more accessible and uh, and Uh, dia lebih, dia lebih, orang kata apa, dia lebih rancak orang kata. Sebab, now you tak payah bergerak. Kan, you, you tak payah bergerak. Dan you cuma tinggal duduk dekat depan komputer and you can do all the assessment as mentioned by uh, Prof. J yesterday. Kan, Prof. J show us some example how does the student do the tricks then melalui online and presentation. It's something that, um, I think that dia bukanlah sesuatu yang sukar. Uh, just a matter of a proper training dan um, bila saya lihat UITM ni kaya dengan dengan training-training yang telah disediakan oleh pelbagai pihak whether it's from BHA ke, BBPA ke, whether from RLD ke, from ISAP ke I can say that they have a very tremendous um, orang kata apa, content and try to help all the warga UITM to, UITM to make sure that um, we can do this. So um, then uh, I think that kalau kita lihat kepada uh, macam saya katakan tadi, eh, uh, to moving ahead, um, I think that uh, as before this, kalau kita kita lihat, kita fokus kepada, uh, we have our smart classroom, we have our big data lab, we have our maker space dan sebagainya. 
but i think that every of of uh, every uh, all of this space dah jadi virtual space dah sebenarnya so dan i think that we should um, understand the ecosystem sebab tu saya ajak pencerah-pencerah to understand what other ecosystem provide by this university kita kena tahu benda tu because of we will use it sama ada tak, tak mungkin sekarang mungkin esok lusa kita akan pakai kan try to benefit all the facility then um, kita ada juga application application that allow us to collaborate contohnya macam Google Education kita ada uh, Microsoft um, dan ada banyak lagi fungsi-fungsi lain tak ketinggalan juga you future kan jadi just a matter of choose the best one yang mana satu nak pakai? Ha, yang itu selalu jadi dilema. Saya pun jadi dilema juga Dr. Nadia bila nak semester ni nak pakai apa eh? Banyak pilihan eh? Ah banyak pilihan, banyak sangat pilihan. Ada dia ada banyak juga pro and cons. But right. again, I put the priority empat benda. Ha, saya letak priority kepada empat perkara Dr. Nadia. I letak is it the application allow me uh, and my student uh, to collaborate? Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two is it uh, the 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 soft uh, the the application allow me and uh, allow the, me and student easily to communicate mm-hmm. kan sebab kadang-kadang ada application yang dia boleh collaborate tapi communicate tak berapa, tak, tak tak berapa berjaya mm-hmm. right and how to make sure lagi dua komponen critical thinking and problem solving boleh berlaku di dalam platform tersebut ha, kan jadi sekarang ni apa yang banyak kebanyakan berlaku kepada kita adalah kebanyakan konten-konten yang ada di dalam dalam platform kita kita buat semakan eh banyaknya dalam bentuk knowledge acquisition pelajar-pelajar kita dia akan beri uh, maklumat ataupun berikan ah uh, kata apa uh, point-point mereka berdasarkan hmm. kepada apa yang mereka ingat apa yang mereka faham pada saya bila kita menggunakan platform online it's supposed to be more than knowledge acquisition it's supposed to be a discourse it's supposed to be uh uh, uh orang kata apa uh, the the serious interaction between you and student between students and students so you're saying that it should be more than rote learning where students yes. just memorize and regurgitate yes. apa yang mereka belajar apa yang mereka hafal yes. di dalam exam sebab tu Dr Nadia sebab tu saya kata technology is not uh, it's not the problem technology is not the problem the problem is us whether we can come up with a very good question or not. Right. Contohnya Dr. Nadia kan, kalau you tanya what is the definition of multimedia di dalam platform tersebut, you expect the high quality high quality answer, you won't get it. You takkan dapat. Kan? What is the definition of multimedia? Dia bagilah definition. Tetapi if you ask the questions yang sedikit memberikan mereka untuk uh, explore, mungkin you kata uh, soalan contoh kan, uh, Um, analyze ya, ataupun kita kata synthesize uh, the definition of multimedia in the uh, in the terms of blah 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 blah. Uh, so you start to create a thinking process with your student walaupun you berada di dalam platform yang uh, kata apa yang 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 tidak memerlukan interaksi secara synchronous. Right, 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 Dr. Syam. So uh, Pagi tadi, uh, mm-hmm. kita ada Dr. Prasana bersama kita dan uh, ada Dr. Prasana mention about integrating plagiarism checker di dalam yeah, right. future, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, cumanya saya ada soalan. When we take our assessments online uh, during the pandemic, right? when we take our assessments online, a lot of the concerns revolve around academic misconduct. Okay, it revolves around cheating where students are able to copy paste and letak balik dekat dalam dekat dalam jawapan tu lah and then they submit. Okay. okay, so what's your take on ethical issues pertaining to assessments that are supposedly technologically enhanced? Correct. Um, I think Dr. Nadia, um, saya sebenarnya um, sewaktu uh, Dr. Nadia bagi saya soalan ni, saya dah pernah menjawab soalan ni pada March 2020 sewaktu so first pandemic. One of the major concerns. One of the major concern. Uh. Memang major concern. So waktu tu kalau you duduk dengan uh, rakan-rakan dalam bidang uh, sealiran uh, yang berbincangkan tentang assessment, ini antara perkara yang dibincangkan daripada awal tahun 2020 lagi sewaktu so right. pandemik berlaku. Uh, yes, um, I think that when we talk about the technology, some sort of the of uh, some sort of the technology tu yang memang kita tak afford nak beli uh, because of it was too sophisticated dan yes um, tak mampulah kita 
kan memang tak mampu lah kita kan jadi sebab itu i do believe that when we come up with a model of adab alright um it's not because of kita tak nak teknologi tersebut because of maybe we can't afford for now um we try to inculcate uh, the ethics the moral value to make sure that the pelajar understand their role as a khalifah Right. Pemegang ilmu to make sure that dia mereka tak melakukan perkara-perkara sebegini. Eh. So we're um, tackling the root cause of the problem dulu. Yeah, the root cause of the problem. Uh, I think I'm not the technology is not the problem. The problem is human. Kan orang yang suka memandai-mandai <laughs> dan pandai-pandai ni kan kita lah sebenarnya. Yeah, sebab apa? Um, I think that we go back to our basic as a human. Then we try to tap in with our moral value, with our culture, with our social, with our religious to make sure that kita kuatkan perkara tersebut sebagai jati diri pelajar-pelajar kita. That's the reason why we start with Dr. Nadia ingat when your first appointment is a hit, perkara pertama yang you kena buat selain daripada polisi adalah ikra integriti pelajar. So meaning that we understand that we, 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 we cannot have that technology but if we can instill some sort of kita kata a, a, a code of practice to make sure that they can apply this uh, quality then kita harap pelajar-pelajar kita fahamlah kenapa kita lakukan sedemikian same goes with the lecturers right kan jadi uh, amat perkara ini adalah perkara yang perlu dicontohi dan perkara yang kena selalu diingati so if we have this adab dalam diri kita is the first number one tapi kalau kita ada teknologi yang boleh bantu kita, it's a bonus for us. Right. Jadi kita dah ada bonus Dr. Nadia. Pertama, kita dah ada proctoring uh-huh. online dan kita dah ada sistem original untuk bantu perkara tersebut. Uh-huh. So we should be grateful. Adalah hiccup sana sikit biasa lah Dr. Nadia kan. It's a, it's a, it's a new application. It's a new, it's a new, new software kan. New software, it's a new process but again, we will we will try to improve time to time. Right. Kita bukan duduk kasi tengok je lah kan. Terlanjur doktor berbicara tentang original. I think I have a video on original yang kita boleh right. kongsikan okay, dengan viewers kita. Uh, sedikit senyap eh chat box kita pada pagi ni doktor Syam. Itulah viewer ramai tapi sedikit ha, senyap. Viewers right. ramai. Uh, it's over right. 600 but sedikit uh, sedikit sunyi sepi di chat box kita. Uh, but nevertheless I'll play this video by original. Just a short video for everyone. Uh, sebentar ya doktor Syam. Hello and welcome everyone. First of all, it's an honor to get the opportunity to speak here at the University of Technology Maura. I am Julia Esch, Content Marketing Manager at our original, and I will be your moderator for this session. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat or questions box. Dr. Nadia Hani Naslan will then address them at the end of this webinar. At this point, we would like to thank um, following people for inviting us. Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International, Professor Datin Dr. Susanna Sulaiman, the Director of the Academic Assessment and Evaluation Division, Associate Professor Dr. Samsul Noor Aslan Mohammad, and the Head of Assessment and Evaluation Development, Dr. Nadia Hanin Naslan. It's an honor to be able to speak here, and this leads over to the question, why are we here? Well, after the introduction of our product original as the main plagiarism detection solution at your institution, we thought it would make sense to introduce us to you, our take on plagiarism and also how to use our system best. So welcome to the session and let's start with the discussion around the topic of academic, uh, academic integrity and plagiarism. Joining me today is Verena Kunzgerman, who is responsible for strategic marketing at Original and an active promoter of our mission to provide every student with the chance to develop their full potential. Welcome, Verena. Thanks, Julia. I'm happy to be here. Uh, when preparing this session, I had a look at UITM's philosophy, which is every individual has the ability to attain excellence through the transfer of knowledge and assimilation of moral values. So as to become professional graduates capable of developing knowledge, self, society, and the nation. So how does that relate to our original's mission of providing every student with the opportunity to develop their full potential? Very interesting question, Julia. Looking at UITM's philosophy and our mission, I would, I would say that in both statements, we both 
put the um, purpose of education first, which I would define as first transferring knowledge to prepare students um, for their future and second, support them in becoming the best version of themselves. This then helps them to get the best opportunities in their future. Each and every student, in my opinion, has a very unique and individual potential. It is up to us to nurture that potential through teaching. And on the other hand, it's the student's responsibility to learn and acquire the knowledge that is transferred. To, you know. Let's be honest, growing up, attending university, also getting to university, you know, learning, it's not always easy. Young adults face many obstacles that influence that journey. And well, let's look at it, their family situation, friends, part-time work, tuition, or courses that they don't like, right? So I think it is understandable that students may want to take shortcuts from time to time, just, you know, to deal with these challenges. Shortcuts might be, we all know that copy pasting phrases, paragraphs, or even a whole text, sometimes, you know, pretending that they have written it themselves. This is what we call plagiarism. And I think, well, there are different kinds of plagiarism and nuances to it. Unfortunately, well, in my opinion, I think um, students rob themselves um, through these shortcuts of the opportunity to acquire the content and knowledge they are supposed to learn and supposed to learn in order to develop their potential. A very interesting point, Verena, and I think that the UITM is well aware of that, um, which is why they chose to check every assignment through a plagiarism detection software as ours, original. Julia, apologies for interrupting here, but there's something I'd like to point out. We often use the, the term plagiarism detection software, and I would say we're both guilty of using that term. But um, let's be honest, our software does not detect plagiarism per se. Technically speaking, our original is a text similarity detection tool. What it does is first analyzing the text, then breaking it down into smaller parts and determining um, the topic of the text. After that, text pieces get checked against millions of sources that um, you can find online. These sources include the internet, but also millions of scientific journals, and of course, also all the papers that have been submitted at UITM, as well as um, at other institutions. What is then shown in our report are text pieces that seem to be similar. In some cases, the similarity can, of course, be an intended plagiarism, no doubt. But in many cases, it could also be that it is a commonly used phrase that is detected. So are you saying that the percentage shown in the report, the percentage where we depict the similarity, is only an indication? Yes, I think that's a good way to put it. Aside from the false positives with, uh, to, which I, to which I was referring to before, um, there's always the possibility that a student didn't use the right way to use it, uh, to quote a text. If that student, for example, forgot a hyphen or a bracket, our software might have detected it as text similarity, even if the student didn't intend to plagiarize. But doesn't our software have a quite sophisticated algorithm and um, we even refer as artificial intelligence to it? Isn't that incorporated in there? It has, Julia, it has, and I would call our software an innovative, state-of-the-art, modern product. Nevertheless, if you look at the term AI or artificial intelligence, there's the word artificial in it, right? Which means, I would say, it's not human, but a very, very well-trained machine. Therefore, a percentage in a report is one thing, and it is a clear and very good indicator that the educator should have a second and deeper look um, at a certain student's submission. This helps time, yes. But on the other hand, educators should always evaluate a student's work and not a machine. Our software is a very helpful tool for educators, not more, not less. And in my opinion, education can only be successful if humans educate humans. I fully agree with that, Reina, and I think this is a very good opportunity to also have a more detailed look at the actual report you were referring to. So I will now switch to the report view to walk us through some of the functionalities. Oh, this is our analysis report. So here we can see 
an overview of all the contained findings that we have here, um, which are divided in two types, basically. Um, it's either matching text, which are the orange, orange mark blocks, or warnings, um, which are the purple blocks, for instance. Let's check out one of the orange boxes, which is referring to matching text findings. And if we click on the detail view, on the left side, we can see the submitted document. On the right side, we can see the matching text that has been found by our software. And we basically have two colors here referring to matching um, spaces or words in, in the text. So yellow stands for words that have been substituted. And red basically indicates that text has been added or removed. Um, so these are the basic colors that we have in this section. We also can click on one of the warnings and see, for instance, um, that these words appear to be longer than uh, what can be considered normal for academic text. This could be perfectly acceptable, but it might also suggest that dividers or other uh, spacers than normal space have been used, um, or it can also indicate uh, characters from another language inserted, which is also one of the common practices. And if so, these other dividers are usually made right, right in the original document with the aim of tricking the text matching system in a way. Um, so these are the warnings that um, are found, for instance, in this example document. Um, if we head back to the overview, um, we can see that here we also get um, similarity values, percentages shown. So the first percentage is referring to the aggregated similarity in this text. Um, the second number is referring to the receiver's average similarity, the receiver in this case being um, any educator, for instance. Um, here we can see submission details, um, and we also have some more functionalities here in the report, but as we are focusing this webinar a little bit more around the particular findings of matching text and warnings, um, we are not going to dive deeper into the other functionalities. We have, though, very extensive information and guides available on that on our website, and you can also always reach out to our support team. Um, so we as well will provide you with additional materials after this webinar to check up on, um, just in case you need any support with using our software, regardless of the point of view you're using it. Um, for instance, we have a video that is step-by-step um, -step walking you through the analysis report, its functionalities, what the particular values are referring to. Um, so yes, if you have any questions or need any support, feel free to reach out to um, our support team, to our original. And now I would like to head the discussion over to the Head of Assessment and Evaluation Development, Dr. Nadia Hanin Nazlan. All right. It's a morning test, Dr. Nadia. Ah, sedikit, yeah. sedikit tentang original. Um, where I think um, all of us are guilty as charged. We're calling, we have been calling them uh, plagiarism, plagiarism detection software since since our turning in, sehingga ke original, we have been calling them that. But basically, we need to have a, a deeper understanding that what the platform does is to find tax matches. Yeah, Dr. Shah? So, supaya kita tidak wrongly accuse our students of plagiarizing when the plagiarism actually does not occur, just based right. on the index saja, Dr. Shah. Betul. Mm. So, this one is very crucial. I think that there's, there are misconception. And then saya, saya dapat lihat juga, uh, when we explore the use of turning in and original, there are some sort of similarity in terms of the functions of the software. Just a matter of the interpretation yang kita faham tentang penggunaan tersebut yang Berbeza-beza. So I think that um, this uh, apa, video try to enlighten uh, the lecturers, the functions of this original. And um, I call, uh, dan saya pastilah kan ada 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 banyak perkara-perkara yang 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 boleh kita lihat uh, tentang original ini. Dan I think that time to time nanti kita akan uh, berikan uh, pen, apa pengemaskinian apa yang berlaku kepada sistem ini.
I think there's there's uh, there's comments yeah. on the on on YouTube. If we can take a little bit of uh, questions and yeah. comments, sedikit yeah. ya, Dr. Sham. Uh -huh. So basically, we have been receiving complaints about or um, suggestions about um, originally they're not friendly as turn it in, wherein they don't have this um, toggle to turn off submitting to repository. Mm -hmm. So whatever that you submit, it's automatically deposited into our repository, UITM's repository. But in actual fact, um, so they have been, um, di, mereka mendengar sebenarnya cadangan kita dan they are coming out with a web inbox 2.0 where uh, you can actually delete whatever that you have submitted. So you don't have to go through units anymore. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Nah, itu saya katakan tadi. Uh, uh, itu, itu saya katakan tadi, Dr. Nadia. Uh. When we use it, we need a feedback dan feedback itu kita right. boleh bagi terus kepada uh, ah yeah. ya, yeah, pada sistem tu tersebut. Right. Sama-sama seperti you future ya, Dr. Syah. Sama seperti you future. So, right. issue nya adalah mm -hmm. if we buy the software, right. We know have a problem. Mhm. Mm we provide the feedback and they did not respond to the feedback ah itu masalah so we need to think on the other solution to make sure that right. kita boleh give a best service for, for our lecturer right 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 betul right. ada satu lagi soalan original boleh digunakan oleh pelajar ah uh, boleh sangat boleh this memangnya untuk pelajar untuk pelajar dia memang untuk pelajar pun sebenarnya memang untuk pelajar uh, jadi memang pelajar boleh gunakan cuma pelajar perlukan uh, email receiver address daripada pensyarah Yeah. Uh, kalau kita nak berbicara tentang original ni saya takut ni terlepas solat panjang ni ha, panjang ni mungkin Dr Nadia mereka boleh tengok balik video kita mm -hmm. yang original boleh tengok balik um, yeah. dan juga garis panduan yang telah kita sediakan di website BPPA betul um, on the timeline itself when will it be activated delete uh, delete uh, automatically ni uh, it depends on the on the original so right now they have already released the beta version So it's only beta for beta testers sahaja. Hmm. So once they have ironed out all the bugs, then definitely it will be released. So, dan Dr. Nadia uh, pun dah yeah. gunakan on the beta version betul? Dah bagi Correct. respon kepada mereka pun sebenarnya. Uh, I have a one page uh, long yeah. response. Respon kepada mereka. Yes, Do, kepada okay, jangan risau kepada semua warga right. akademik. Kita ambil semua you all punya feedback dan kita dah majukan kepada kepada mereka. Right Dr. Syam. So circling back to our technology enhanced right. assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, tadi saya rasa ni Dr. Syam ada menyatakan tentang learning analytics. So so do you mm -hmm. think by using um, technology enhanced assessment can they actually provide us with better diagnostics of our students um, performance? Yes. Uh, I think that there are there are some sort of uh, there are some application yang boleh berikan kita diagnostic analysis. The very simplest one eh. Diagnostic analysis yang paling mudah, nak tak, tak tak complicated, contohnya macam kahut, crazy tu memang kita dah tahu dah diagnostik. Tetapi sebenarnya, saya tak nak membawa, tak nak bawa you all lihat kepada application tu on your on your priority. Saya bagi satu contoh, the diagnostic analysis yang sebenarnya yang kita boleh gunakan adalah entrance and exit survey. One of it. Can diagnostic analysis masuk aja pelajar pelajar kena buat entrance survey. How many of us use the entrance survey as an indicator? But Dr. Syam, yep. ada saya ada menerima juga komen. Hmm. Tapi kami tak tahu macam mana nak buat entrance exit survey. Macam mana yeah. nak buat yes. Sebab kalau kita nak buat entrance survey, dia mesti sifat dia mesti diagnostik. We want to know the apa the the, the prior knowledge of the students. Tapi kalau kita buat And uh, kalau kita buat item tu tak betul, so kita takkan dapat maklumat apa yang kita nak. That's the reason why kadang-kadang saya faham ada pensyarah, uh, dia, 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 dia tak faham, dia buat dan dia anggap itu macam is is a is a process, is a, is a compulsory process, uh, perlu ada entrance, perlu ada exit. Tapi tidak menggunakan data itu sebaiknya. Itu salah satu contoh entrance uh, ataupun exit yang kita boleh katakan dia sebagai uh, learning analytic dalam bentuk diagnostik. Ada juga kadang-kadang kita boleh buat some sort of learning analysis ataupun learning preferences dengan pelajar-pelajar kita. Jadi uh, pada saya, the analytic is uh, analytics itu hanya akan berlaku sekiranya kita memahami uh, kehendak data yang ingin kita kumpulkan. Alright, so data tidak akan bermakna sekiranya item-item uh, yang kita bangunkan itu tidak memberikan makna kepada kita. Jadi again, whatever uh, dan antara salah satu, satu contoh learning uh, analytics yang kita boleh gunakan contoh eh A very simple one. Saya tak kata dalam konteks yang yang terlalu sophisticated sebab kita tidak berada dalam keadaan itu. Uh, contohnya uh, is a rubric, matrix. 
di dalam sistem you future. It's a very simple analytics untuk bantu kita. Ataupun uh, kalau kita buat soalan MCQ, it's a very simple uh, information provide to us supaya kita faham dekat mana ruang kekuatan dan kelemahan belajar. Right. So Dr. Syam tadi di dalam uh, paparan video original, we have also heard about um, artificial intelligence. So the astonishing acceleration of AI and especially in education, ya, yeah, Dr. Syam, yep. um, it, dia akan melahirkan uh, next generation assessments, okay, yang probably might be driven by AI, artificial intelligence. Yep. If you can see, um, Uh, essay meals, ya. Yeah? So sekarang ni kita kita sebenarnya uh, the least of our concern is uh, plagiat uh, or plagiarism, right. but our main concern is actually our students paying essay meals to come up with homeworks or essay yang mereka tidak tulis, but this is generated uh, using AI, kan? So what hmm. are changes? What are the changes that you anticipate with this next generation of assessments that's driven by AI? Personalized assessment. That's my adaptive, yeah. Uh, be ada ya. Personalized assessment and be that adaptive. That's my vision lah. Kan, kalau masuk masuk masa kata kalau kalau sebelum saya pencin, kalau <laughs> kata kalau sebelum pencin tu nak tengok benda tu berlaku di UITM. Right, right, right. So, meaning that we 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 have the question bank mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. that are very adaptive mm -hmm. and can personalize the learners need. That right. personalized is not limited to the ordinary students tetapi membantu kepada student with disability. That's my vision for assessment. Okay, right. Jadi kalau kita boleh pergi ke tahap itu. That would be wonderful, right? Wonderful. Yes. Right. Okay. So I think um, we are nearing to the end of our session, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Shah. Um, but let's pick up a few questions. Um, of course, kalau kita bercerita tentang original, then the questions would revolve around original. Yeah. So kita address question on original. Um, pelajar boleh tak access kepada similarity index sama macam directly, sama macam turn it in. It's coming in web inbox 2.0. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. They are responding. They correct. are responding. Correct, correct. They are already responding. It's coming. So after this, once we have, uh, kita dah ada full access kepada web inbox 2.0 of original, you no longer need to forward all this um, um, similarity index to your students, uh, but mereka akan dapat access uh, dan melihat similarity index tersebut. Right? Um, ya, yeah, harap original buat, yeah, dia dah buat. Dia buat, dia tengah buat. Dia dah, dia dah ada beta tersebut. Dia dah buat, ya. Yeah, yeah. Dia tengah buat, right. Reduce, if we can reduce the number of students, then probably it, it's, it's, it's again easy to personalize Dr. Syam. But it's again with our direction, uh, Global Renown University 2025. So I think that yang itu susah lah saya nak jawab. Eh? Tetapi I think that uh, kita, kita we, we we cannot do so much on that. Tapi apa yang kita kena buat adalah try to make sure we align with the GRU 2025 untuk pastikan universiti kita berada di tempat yang terbaik. I think I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna um, ask you this last question just yeah. from our viewers, yeah. So um, there's an issue when lecturers they want to submit for publication, then the journals require authenticate or turn it in report. So what they want actually? Ya, yeah, how bagaimana yang kita nak bantu bersyarah ni? Persoalan pertama lah, apa apakah jurnal itu perlukan? Um, if they request similarity index or um, then original provides them with similarity index. So it's it's basically the same thing. Uh, Cuma ni saya rasa mungkin agak jarang-jarang uh, jurnal yang minta turn it in hmm. ataupun identity. Sebab we have to we have to be uh, aware on this. Um, Penggunaan sama ada, kalau kita lihat penggunaan turn in adalah to serve on the academic purposes especially untuk penghantaran um, apa disertasi pelajar-pelajar. So I think that that is the main intention why we buy the turn in um, sebelum uh, sebelum ini. And I think that we are bringing the same intention meaning that we are prioritizing the use of academic especially for the student submission dan sebagainya. So um, That's my 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 answer for that to make sure that kita understand pembelian kita untuk original adalah to serve uh, to the students in submitting their assignment. Right, Dr. Syam, if I may add, so apabila dahulu kita mula membeli turn it in, it was it was solely for postgraduate. Yeah, correct. Right? 
uh, dan sekarang it's kita dah buka lebih luas kepada our undergraduates because Betul. you know we have a large number of students and now we are also opening up selain daripada thesis dissertation although that's prioritized kita juga buka untuk assessments assessment right essay based assessments and um, moving forward with the integration dengan u future um, hopefully Uh, yeah. Nanti lebih memudahkan uh, tugas pelajar-pelajar, eh tugas pencarah-pencarah kita lah. Mm. Alright, Dr. Syam. So, I All think right. we don't have a lot of time. Do you have any last words for our viewers? Um, tak ada apa. Um, cuma, I think that um, we we'll say thanks to all of warga UITM bersama-sama dengan BBPA. Cuma jangan lupa untuk sesi petang nanti we are talking Betul. about the quality of assessment. They, this one is very interesting because of what? Kenapa saya kata interesting, This, we are talking about how to maintain the quality of program academic. Tambah-tambah lagi kita adalah SWA akreditasi. Betul. So, yeah. petang nanti kita bersama siapa Dr. Syam? Petang nanti kita bersama dengan Prof. Don yang merupakan uh, Rektor UITM Kedah dan juga orang kuat di MQA dan kita bersama-sama dengan TS Dr. Razul. Uh, di Inka, uh, Inka eh, yang menguruskan hal-hal yang berkaitan dengan pengauditan dan juga suap akreditasi. So don't miss out. Saya, saya yakin petang ini ada banyak isu-isu berkaitan dengan kualiti akan dibincangkan Dr. Nadia. Yes, it's going to start at 2.30. So um, nanti kita jumpa balik semula petang nanti. Terima kasih kerana bersama dengan right. kami. Terima kasih semua. Assalamualaikum, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye.